You need to rewire your brain. Just because you studied a different field or you're working in something completely unrelated does not mean that you cannot break into data or that it's even a waste of time. Everything you've studied up until this point, every single job that you've had until this point, even every conversation that you've had until this point plays a vital role into whatever job you're gonna land next or whatever skill set you're gonna dive into next. Take me for example. I spent five years studying business. I did four years of undergrad studying economics and one year studying commerce, my master's. And the funny part is by the end of it, I wanted to pivot into tech and I was like, I wasted so much time, energy and money. It just didn't make sense. Everyone around me thought I was crazy. Everyone around me thought I was wasting all this energy and time and money. But you know, the most interesting part is once I actually broke into the field, this made me a better data analyst. This made me a better data scientist later on because I already had the business acumen. Everything I learned did not go to waste. I still use a lot of what I've learned in my degree, even though it's unrelated at work a lot of the times. And I'm sure this is gonna be the case for you too if you're coming from an unrelated background. If you're new here, my name is Rohan. I started my career off as a data analyst at a startup, then moved to Wall Street in business intelligence, and finally a data scientist at a tech company. I now run my own consultancy firm and freelancing. We service e-commerce companies, and now I make YouTube videos to help educate people to try to break into this field like I was, because I was pretty lost when I was breaking in. Now, the hardest part about breaking into this field is finding a community of people who support you, because when I was breaking in, not a lot of people even knew what data even was. People who didn't even know data was a career. So being around people who are also passionate about it plays a huge role in your success. So that's why I recommend you join the Discord down below, completely free. Go check it out and we have almost 5,000 people in it. So here are three reasons why your degree or your job is not holding you back to land your next job in data. The first reason is skills are transferable no matter what career you do. We're even working as a server. You're getting very good at communications. If you're working in sales, you're getting very good at being rejected and selling your work. All of these are very transferable skills into the world of analytics and honestly, any field. So when I was getting my degree, I took a class on strategy in business and I realized that I have a pretty good sense of like what blue ocean is, what red ocean is, and all these business context words that a lot of other data scientists and data analysts don't have. Because the most important thing I want you to take from this video is that a lot of data analysts really struggle with providing valuable insight because they may be very strong with the technical skills, but they just don't have the business acumen to help support it. Think about it this way. You could be very, very gifted at SQL or Python, but if you're working on an analysis for months, but the problem you're solving isn't even relevant, it doesn't make the business money or it doesn't save the business money, chances are you're not actually impacting the business and chances are you won't be at that company very long. So my point is here is you need to have a very, very strong business acumen. So if you studied business like me or you currently work in the world of business, this is very, very helpful for you to break in. Next, critical thinking applies to almost every job. I mean, I studied economics and I can tell you the one thing that I've learned from this degree is kind of like how to think. I took a class called econometrics, which overlaps a lot with statistics. And I've actually used this one class on the job itself, funny enough. Enough. And I've also just learned how to problem solve. So even if there's a problem I don't know how to solve, I've learned frameworks that can help me solve that. So for example, let's say you're working on a huge problem. You're working for an e-commerce company and the sales are just dipping month over month. You would then use a framework you used in school called trunking. So you could break that large problem down into smaller problems and solve it piece by piece. So these are what we call frameworks that you learn in your degree or any other job that can be applied in data and analytics. Lastly, I want to make it very clear. Communication and persuasion is so so, so important while breaking into data. And oftentimes people who are coming from a sales background, business background, or a liberal arts background have a very, very strong sense in persuasion and communication. Because think about it this way, if you're not able to explain that complex analysis you just did to a non-technical stakeholder like someone in marketing, chances are if they don't understand what you're doing, they won't take your recommendation to heart and all your work is for nothing. So I will say like probably 50% of your work is selling your work, not even completing the work. So being able to sell yourself, sell your work, sell your projects and explain it in simple terms to someone who just isn't technical is so important that someone like me or you probably have an advantage in. I would say probably the most important thing here in the transferable skills lens is that a big part of data science and data analytics is domain knowledge. And when you spent like your whole career in a different field or you majored or studied something completely different, even if it's like you're working as a server at a restaurant and you really understand how the hospitality industry, chances are you have mastered and you have learned that domain. So it's as much short of a learning curve for you to just learn the technical toolkits. Cause end of the day, the technical toolkits, the easy part, the hard part that has to be learned through just time and effort 
is the domain knowledge. So technical stuff, you've probably seen a ton of videos like you can learn data analytics in three to six months. This is true. You can learn those skills in three to six months. But the thing is, you're not going to learn the domain knowledge in three to six months. This is why like once you start a new job, onboarding itself is three to six months. So you can learn the domain, you can learn the business, you can learn the database. And after you learn these, then you learn what problems to ask. And this is the key here. You have to learn what problems to ask and you can only know these problems through domain knowledge. So my point here is, let's say you studied environmental science or some liberal arts degree, or in my case, I studied business. I know the financial industry very well. So I worked in business intelligence in the finance industry. I interned as a financial analyst at a finance company so that I could go in, learn my new data skills, and then apply it at another finance company. Do you see what I'm saying here? So domain knowledge matters the most over anything else in the world of analytics and data science. So reason number two, that's not a big deal if you major or you come from a different background is knowledge compounds no matter where you're coming in from. Your previous field can actually complement the world of analytics with whatever toolkits or whatever skill sets that you built up there. Whether it's understanding human behavior from psychology, market trends from business, the unique knowledge that you're actually gaining that are just unique to you brings a breadth of knowledge that maybe a lot of other data scientists at your company just don't have. So for me, when I was studying business, we learned these frameworks called like the SWOT analysis, the Porter five forces and our strategy class I was mentioning earlier. And I've actually brought these frameworks up to data scientists on my team who actually studied C computer science, which is totally different from business. So they didn't know what these were. And I was able to provide value to the team by bringing these frameworks up. And we were able to actually conduct a strong analysis and we we're able to actually convince C-suite level execs with their recommendations because of my business background. So what you think is your weakness may actually be your strong point. So in my economics class, we use this language called Stata and R. So Stata is actually this economics programming language for statistics. And the funny enough, like you can actually use this in data science as well. We did a lot of experimentation in my economics classes, which I then carried over those principles over to the data analytics world. So this could be like forecasting. We did a ton of regressions in economics. So these were easily able to be applied. Lastly, let's say you actually studied marketing and you are coming from a marketing role and you want to pivot into tech. You already really understand the marketing teams, like what they're looking for, what their incentives are. So if you ever transition to analytics, you will be much more equipped to handle the relationship between the marketing team and the data team. You can better explain and understand the marketing frameworks and the marketing problems to your data team and then vice versa. So I think in a way, sometimes it actually is more beneficial for you to actually study or be from a different background and then move over to data. Remember, data is such a new field that a lot of people in the field right now don't have like traditional data science degrees. That wasn't a thing five, 10 years ago. That is so, so new. So the last point I want to make here is a fresh perspective brings on new ideas to a team. So you ever start a data science project or data analytics project and you're debugging the code and you just don't know what's going on. You spend hours, if not days on that, but then you just go to sleep and you're just doing something else. You're at dinner with a friend and then the solution kind of hits you or you have a friend who's looking at the code for the first time and they immediately spot it out. This is what I like to call like people who are new or coming from different backgrounds actually can provide value because they've never seen that framework before. You are so conditioned to what you know that you don't understand any gaps in your knowledge. You're ignorant to the gaps in your knowledge. So someone coming in who doesn't have the same background as you, like you and I, we can actually provide and let people know where the gaps in their knowledge are and vice versa. So an example of this is, let's say you're a designer or let's say you're really interested in the arts and you love painting, you love drawing pictures. A big part of data analytics and data science is data visualization. So you'll have such an unfair advantage over the other data scientists with your artistic abilities. You would be able to make beautiful dashboards with a user in mind that probably someone like me couldn't do. That's one of my weak points is data visualization. I'm not able to create the most beautiful, the most aesthetic visualizations, which surprisingly is very important. It's not just about being able to make a line chart or bar chart. It's about presenting it properly to your end audience. And if you're coming from an art background, you already know how proper design works that someone like me doesn't. Another example of this is let's say you're coming from a psychology background. You major in psychology, you want to pivot into tech. What do you do? You may understand human behavior. You may understand how consumers think and you can actually frame and ask the right questions for your data team to ask, and that will help with your experimentation. So my point with all three of these things is that your background is not a disadvantage. It is an advantage. And you probably clicked on this video because you're like, how do I break into tech? Okay, that's cool. I know it's an advantage now, but how do I use this to my advantage? So I'm going to explain exactly how you should break in if you're coming from this different background. Now that you know it is a hidden advantage, we like to call this your unfair advantage. So first, leverage whatever expertise you have prior. For me, it was business and finance because I worked in finance. I studied economics and commerce. And this was my unfair advantage to the world of analytics. So here I identified what field I exactly wanted to be in. I wanted to work in a Wall Street in a data role because I kind of had that new analytics skill set 
and I also had the domain knowledge for finance. So I got a job on Wall Street. For you, this could be maybe you're very good at marketing. You're working as a paid media marketer. Then you can actually do marketing and analytics. And there's a marketing analytics department in most companies. So this is what you call like what you're good at and then what you're learning and then blend them into one and explain this as your story in the interview. To really support your application, I recommend doing projects as soon as you decide what you want to do. So you can actually see on this channel, I actually did a few stock portfolio projects in SQL that I can then add to my portfolio and show people like I know what I'm talking about because I've done these projects. It is much better to show employers what you can do than just tell them what you can do. So really spend time on these projects, take your time and really just ask the right questions because half the battle is asking the right questions in these projects. And once you get to the interview, really highlight the facts saying, hey, I love what I did previously, but now I want to break into data and I want to blend what I did previously with my new analytical toolkit and really tell them how you can provide value with the three reasons I listed before. So I recommend saying this video, watching it later before your interview, because I promise you it will help you so much. But anyways, if you got any value out of this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next one. Peace.